culture of the community and the team was as important to him as any coach we've ever had, of, of loving to see that marriage come together. And so he felt a true responsibility to deliver that product to, to the guys on the street that loved the program and, and took it personally, which all of our coaches have, but he, he truly uh, let that get inside him where you know it, it would physically affect him when he felt like he let it, the team down. I know what this program uh, means to Coach Prohm and uh, the outside entities coming in, the national media coming in, the all-access pieces that were being done, uh, the, the really the Murray name being on the, on the map nationally. I know that meant a lot to him. He just wanted to keep going. It's bringing so much exposure and notoriety, and it's great for our program, but it's great for this school and this community and this university, and so many people are getting benefited by this, not just our basketball team and our players. Murray State's basketball program was officially in rarefied air, and at heights no racer team had ever reached before. That's when Steve Prohm took a brick etched with four words and turned it into a foundational piece of Murray State's season. When I give you that, what, do you, what does that say to you, mean to you? The first thing is, I was like, James, we need to get these bricks made. And he's thinking to himself, where in the world am I going to get bricks engraved? A, find the bricks, B, get them engraved, and then C, he was like, Coach, that bag of bricks is the heaviest thing I've ever carried. That year was surreal, really. I mean... There's so many people involved in it. Like I'm the head coach, but like I got this message from Tim Perkins. You know, like uh, you have good people in your circle, in your inner circle, in your foundation to where you have the platform. They may give you the nuggets and then you can spread it and share it. But at the end of the day, what this meant, and Nehemiah 6.3, I'm doing a great work and I will not come down, is well, I want to challenge our guys. When I read that story that night, sitting in the hotel room in Edwardsville, before we became the last undefeated team in the country was, guys, life is great right now and things are really good, okay? And the story of Nehemiah, he goes back and he rebuilds the, the hit the wall, you know, to protect Jerusalem and he goes back there and in 50 days he does it and, you know, and through God's help and, and God's belief in him. But as you're building that wall, the devil comes and tries to take him away from his, his duty. Regardless of what's going on uh, outside, in the media, other teams, um, you know, as long as we stay on this wall that, we, that we're building, we stay on this path, um, you know, we control our own destiny. We don't want to let outside things come in. Um, we don't want one person jumping off the wall, you know what I mean? We don't want one person over here on the wall. Let's all stay on this, on this wall that we're trying to build, you know what I mean? Let's all stay on this path and um, we'll be just fine. Things or outside noise started to go in, stay on your wall, you know, stay with everything that we built um, as a unit, um, you know, focus on everything that, you know, we talk about as a unit, everything that we talk about and fight for in this, in this huddle, in this locker room, you know, it's going to be things that come from the outside with success, with, you know, with with bad games, with losses, you know, the outside noise, we just tried to keep, you know, keep a wall around what we was building, you know, special and just take that to the game, you know, and try to bring it back and live with the results. And that was the biggest message of these guys, man, is like, you're, as, as college athletes, as representatives of Murray State, you are on a wall and you're going to try to get torn off that wall, knocked off that wall. Uh, people are going to try to tempt you, okay? But you got to understand when you stand up on here, you represent Ivan Asker, and you represent Isaiah Cannon, and you represent Alan Ward, and you represent, represent, represent the suitors and the players that became before you in the city of Murray, Kentucky, in Murray State University, in Western Kentucky, and all the people that played a big part in your life. So you got to be able to fight it all off. And if you go back and look, in life, in great teams, man, you talked about Dante and Ivan, their leadership, Isaiah scoring, Edge rebounding, 
Alan's belief in me, my staff. We all had roles, the fans filling up for us to have that moment. And so that message right there, and uh, it's funny how this works. Um, because if you really know the story of me, and I don't want to get off on a tangent, this, this, is, this is powerful, and it was powerful for that community. I wanted this bad for you guys tonight for a lot of reasons. You know, it's a big day, it's a huge day for Juwan. That's how I let it go, coach. That's how you see happy. Tears of joy. <laughs> Tears of joy, coach. Proud of you, coach. We are, coach. Tears of joy, coach. That's all right. It came from a genuine place uh, from Coach Prom. He wasn't just saying it to say it. Um, with my relationship with Coach Prom, I knew he was just a, a great guy with a great heart that really cared about uh, everyone. And we had that special bond that he was the person that recruited me. I believe I was his first recruit at Murray State. Um, and he knew about my life, he knew about my past, he knew about my relationship with my dad, so I knew it came from a sincere place. Uh, you know, he's done a lot for me and I can't thank him enough. But that definitely shows you how much of a coach is into his players. You know, for him to break down in front of us, that, that shows how much he loves and cares for us. I know it, it meant a lot to Juwan, um, playing on, on the anniversary of, of his father's passing and to clinch the championship there. Uh, meant a lot, and I know how close Coach Prome was with the Long family through his recruitment. And uh, never will forget seeing him you know, get choked up there in the locker room and when he was addressing the team. Something so personal like that, you know, it's, it's, it's tough to see one of your players, you know, go through something like that. And um, Coach Prome, with whatever it was, whether it was um, family issues, personal issues, school issues, um, practice whatever it may be here take your shirt off and give you know give to you so um, shoot just seeing Juwan hurt I mean coach was hurting you know he because he he loved Juwan I think just all that emotion of relationship with the Juwan what he's going through and then obviously the chance to win a championship that night for, for a lot of people um, but Juwan's always you know he'll always be one of my most special players that team loves Steve and, you know, man to a man, Steve's one of the most genuine, will do anything for you type coach, type, type person. Um, he, he is always concerned about someone else. You know, it's never about Steve. It's always about the players, the staff, families. Um, Steve will take his shirt off his back and give it to you. To me, those guys play hard for each other and for Murray State, but let's not, you know, those guys play hard for Steve because they loved him.